What's going on everyone, Desktops Gaming here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going over an age old question to see if you really need to upgrade your stock cooler. Uh, now, as you guys may know, most of the new CPUs on the market now, especially the higher end one or higher end models, whether it be Intel or AMD tend to not come with a stock cooler anymore. Uh, but like we're gonna be taking a look at uh, CPUs like the 3600 and maybe even 5600X today to see if you need to go past the stock cooler. Uh, so we have a few different models sitting in front of us, ranging in different sizes, uh, different TDPs. So I said have one here from Scythe, from Arctic, Deep Cool, and then Arctic's largest air cooler, the Freezer 50. Uh, we did a previous video on this a while back on the channel. I said we'll link that up there if you want to see this cooler in particular. Uh, but we've touched on all these on the channel so far. But like I said, the main question we're going to answer today, after we set up a little test bench, is what performance would you see? swapping away from the stock cooler included with most low-end Ryzen CPUs. Let's get into it. All right, now that we got somewhat of a makeshift test bed set up here, uh, let's go over uh, what we're going to be testing today, like I said, we won't be doing any kind of more high-end CPUs. One, because I don't have one on hand currently, other than my 3600 and 5600X. Um, but like I said, most high-end CPUs actually don't come with stock coolers anymore. And most people, you have to use aftermarket coolers on them anyway. So today, we'll be mainly testing the Ryzen 5 3600 that comes with the Wraith cooler here. Uh, so we'll be testing that one out. So this will be the first one to go on to give us a baseline, and then we'll move on to the other coolers you saw in the intro. Uh, as far as the system specs, we just have our 2070 Super on a Aorus X570 um, Elite motherboard here. Uh, we're using 32 gigs of some silicon power RAM. I believe this is 3200 speed, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 36, uh, but it's 32 gigs of that uh, since it will fit with every cooler we have, uh, which have our boot drive down there. And then we'll be using uh, Arctic's MX4 uh, compound on each one. So let's go ahead and get the stock one on, get a baseline, and then we'll see how it does. All right, so just to keep testing simple, like I said, we've gone and installed the stock cooler on there now. Like I said, for the test system, we have 32 gigs of silicon power at 3200 speed. We could gain a little bit more performance by going say 3600, but 3200 should be fine for this 3600 here. Like I said, have the stock cooler installed on there now. We'll be using the same paste on every cooler we have, but since we have so many to test, I decided to keep it pretty simple today. We'll be doing uh, a 10 to 15 minute run on Cinebench, and then we'll do a CPU test in 3D Mark since we have so many coolers to go through. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into that. Uh, as far as the baseline for the CPU, um, won't be doing any overclocking or anything like that, but we have, I have turned on uh, PBO. So I'll be allowing the CPU to boost to whatever it wants to under load just to see how performance scales if you go with a aftermarket cooler. So let's go and dive into testing. All right, so that test just wrapped up after the 10 minute uh, little stress test there. I won't bore you guys with charts. I'll just kind of read off uh, my findings after each test. Uh, like I said, it looks like throughout the test, we were holding about 3.85 gigahertz or so. And then after the 10 minute test, we reached an average temp of 86.5 C. So definitely not the best, but uh, you know, still not throttling or anything like that. Um, as far as the tests go, as we go forward on the different, uh, different coolers, like I said, pretty much all these were set to the normal fan curve setting in BIOS. Uh, that might be a little different for every motherboard, but uh, I won't be doing any no noise normalized thermals today because most people typically won't go and dial in fan curves. I'm trying to get you know more of the stock right out of the box settings because uh, most people, if they do upgrade their cooler, probably just going to slap it on and keep running with it. So uh, like I said, in the beginning, the only thing we've set is the CPU fan curves to stock. Uh, there's PBO enabled, and that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into a 3D Mark CPU test. All right, so now that that test is finished, we can go over our results here. Uh, so it looks like we have a CPU score of 7242. Let's see, it looks like we held about a boost of 3.9 gigahertz or so. And it looks like our temperatures, you know, this would be a little more realistic versus uh, Cinebench R23, because typically games aren't gonna tax every core and thread to 100%. Uh, so it looks like we averaged around 70.8871C uh, roundabouts throughout the test. All right, so we'll go ahead and document that. Uh, that'll be our baseline, and then we'll go on to the next cooler. All right, so now that we've recorded those results, uh, we're gonna get the stock cooler off, get over the IHS cleaned off. Uh, next up on the chopping block is the Katana 5. It's actually from Scythe. Like I said, it's a 92 millimeter little fan on there. So we're gonna be swapping the stock one out and testing this one next. 
same test gambit suite that we did on the stock cooler. So let's go ahead and swap it out. All right, so that R23 run just completed. Uh, looks like we're looking at a uh, clock around 3.91 gigahertz or so. So definitely some improvement there over the stock cooler. And then as far as temperatures on average for the 10 minute test, we pulled all the way down to 75 C. So a little over a 10 degree jump and difference there. Like I said, definitely you can notice, uh, you know, just that little bit, you know, we're talking a little over 500 megahertz offset difference just by changing the coolers. Like I said, PBO was enabled for this test, just like at the last test, allowing the CPU to boost on its own. Uh, but like I said, just that little bit of cooling performance, you know, coming down you know, pretty much 10 degrees there, a little over 10 degrees there, made a pretty big difference on what it was. So let's go ahead and jump into Time Spy, and then we'll come back with those scores. All right, so Time Spy just wrapped up, but it looks like we got a slight score bump there going up to 72.52, held a frequency of four gigahertz across the test, and temps uh, didn't move too much compared to the original. Uh, it looks like it came down to 69.1, about 69C uh, across the end of the test. All right, so that is for the Scythe cooler here. We're going to go ahead and swap now to the freezer from Arctic here. Like I said, that is their Freezer 34, the eSport Duo. Uh, it's a, it's a you know, two fan design here, so you got to push and a pull. Like I said, so we'll go ahead and get this one mounted up and then we'll run the same test. All right, so that run just concluded on uh, Cinebench R23 with the eSport Freezer on there. Uh, like I said, going over the results there, we held an average frequency of 3.97 gigahertz and a temp around 68C at the end of the test. Uh, so that's a little bit of a jump from the Katana cooler, which held about 3.9, right at 3.91 gigahertz across the test, and then held a temp of around 75C after the 10 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and run time spy on this one and then we'll move on to the next cooler. All right, so the time spy run just concluded for the Freezer eSport here. Our uh, results going over those, our score was a 72.69 with a average frequency of 4.11 gigahertz and our temps came down to 64.25 C. So comparing that to the last cooler, the Katana there, uh, its score was 72.52. So just a modest increase there to 72.69. Uh, frequency went up by about 100 megahertz or so and then temp came down around five degrees. So comparing that to the you know last cooler we had on here. All right, so we're gonna move on and jump into the next cooler. Uh, we have two more to go through here. Uh, so we have one here from Deep Cool. It's their AS500. Now this one's a little interesting. I uh, want to kind of test the differences between here because uh, they're pretty similar tower coolers here. Uh, this one is a single fan, but it's a 140. So uh, typically these can spin a little slower, typically a little more quiet, especially if that's what you're going for, if you want a more silent operating fan. Um, compared to the two 120s on this one. Uh, but like I said, I just want to see the differences here between the two. So we're going to go and swap this one out and then do the same test. All right, so the test on R23 for the Deepcool AS500 just finished up. And we got a few more modest gains here comparing it to the Freezer Esport Duo on the last test. Uh, looks like we held an average frequency of 3.99 gigahertz uh, across the test there. So just a little bit higher than the Esport Duo that was sitting at 3.97. And then as far as temps go, we came down a little bit, uh, comparing it to the Arctic Freezer Esport Duo. That one held a temp of around 68C throughout the test. Uh, this one averaged 65.5C around that range uh, throughout the test there, on the 10 minute test we did. Uh, so we have one more cooler to go, uh, but like we still need to do the time spy test on this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into those time spy results. The time spy results are done for the AS500 here. It looks like we went up a little bit more. Our score came out to a 73.22, comparing that to the eSport Duo the last test. That was a 72.69, so up a little bit there. Uh, frequency didn't move too much uh, on the eSport Duo. It was 4.11, then we got 4.15 average. Uh, during this test with the AS500, but the temp did come down a good bit more. Uh, the eSport Duo was holding 64.25 C. That looks like we were holding about 59.5 C on the AS500 in this test. All right, so do we have one more to go? Uh, it's kind of saving the big boy for last here. Uh, like, so we have Arctic Freezer 50. This really overbuilt massive air cooler. Um, like I said, so well, I'm definitely curious to see how it stacks up against the rest of them here. Uh, like I said, the biggest thing on this one, we have reviewed uh, this cooler a while back on the channel. If you guys want to check that out, I'll, I'll try to link it up at the top here. Um, but the biggest thing is just memory clearance. Uh, these, these fans do stick out a good bit. Luckily, they do fit the silicon power kit I have on here now. Uh, but just keep that in mind. Uh, this is the only one I was kind of worried about today on testing to see how it would do. I mainly um, you know, want to keep the memory pretty much the same. But 
Like I said, we'll be installing this one next and then we'll wrap up on uh, you know, the main experiment we were doing today. So let's dive into swapping this one out. Okay, so we installed the Freezer 50 on, the Beasley air cooler from Arctic, and then just finished up the R23 run. Uh, looks like we got a frequency of pretty much four gigahertz across the board. Uh, like I said, the AS500 was pretty close at pretty much 3.99 or so. And then as far as the temp throughout the test, it actually never really got above about 58. We're running about 58.85. So not that far off from the AS500 holding about a 59.5 C. All right, so let's do the time spy test, our last one for the coolers for today. And then we'll wrap everything up on why you might want to get an aftermarket cooler. All right, so we just finished up the time spy test on the Freezer 50 here. Uh, their numbers came out to a 7,347, uh, comparing that to the uh, AS500, which was at 73.22. So we got a modest increase there. Uh, frequency held up right at 4.2 gigahertz across the test, and we held an average of about 58C compared to 59.5 on the previous AS500. All right, so I mean, this has all been fun, but what does it really mean? Uh, the biggest reason to go, you know, away from your stock cooler up to an aftermarket cooler, even on a lower power CPU like this, is uh, going to be a couple reasons. Uh, one of the biggest things is noise. Um, you know, if you do you know, care about that in your case, depending on what kind of case you have, how far it is going to be away from you. Um, like I said, definitely having that stock cooler on there with a smaller fan is going to ramp up a lot faster and, you know, going to be a lot more audible throughout the case, even, you know, if you're further away from it. Um, mainly because that fan has to spin a little faster to keep everything as cool. You don't have as much, uh, there's no heat pipes there like you do on, like you have on aftermarket coolers and you don't have as much heat dissipation uh, through that cooler. Uh, so if noise is a concern to you, uh, like I said, definitely worth looking into. Obviously, you know, that's because it keeps your thermals down going with the aftermarket cooler. Uh, now, as you probably can see from the, the numbers we ran down, if you go back and look, um, you know, that you might hit a point of diminishing return. You know, like I said, a cooler like this is really sweet. Uh, you know, like I said, the last test we've done on these, they pretty much compare to some 240 AOs and even some 360 AOs that we compared them against in previous videos we've done on the Freezer 50. Um, like I said, biggest concern you gotta run into with a cooler this size, like I said before, is going to be memory clearance because uh, it's so uh, large, it tends to kind of hang over where your memory plugs in or your RAM plugs in. So definitely keep that in mind on a cooler this size. Uh, but I mean, the thermal performance is awesome. I mean, especially under, you know, quick loads. Like I said, it, it has no problem keeping the CPU really cool. And I could, you know, definitely see even testing this on higher TDP CPUs and handling those just fine as well. But as you can see, the performance also did scale. Like I said, we did no overclocking or anything like that on any of the tests we did, just with PBO on, and performance did scale up based off how cool we could keep the CPU. Like I said, we did hit a point of kind of diminishing returns as we got up to the larger coolers, you know, the AS500 and this one not too far off from each other. But you do get some better performance, you know, especially if you're not going to sit there and tweak and dial in an overclock. Uh, just off being able to keep the CPU a little bit cooler. Uh, so that definitely will make a difference. So, you know, like some main things with noise, like it's gonna be a lot quieter going with a cooler, say with bigger fans, uh, ones that don't have to spin quite as fast to keep everything as cool, that have uh, larger heat pipes, um, you know, more heat dissipation for the CPU to, you know, exit that out in your case. And obviously keep these numbers in mind too, because this is an open test bench style system. So keep in mind, add a few degrees, uh, depending on how much airflow your case is gonna have. So long as you're rocking a case with decent amount of airflow, shouldn't be too far off from the kind of test bed setup we got going on today. But do keep that in mind that you could see two to three, maybe even four C difference once you put this inside of a case, depending on how good of airflow your case has. Uh, so yeah, definitely I would recommend, you know, even with a lower end CPU like a 3600 or even 5600X, like I use in my main system, uh, I don't mind going with aftermarket coolers, like I said, because I want to keep my CPU running uh, definitely quieter, keep it running cooler. Uh, it gives me more headroom for overclocking if you're going to get into something like that. Um, but the biggest thing is, like I said, going to be, you know, just being able to pull more performance out of your CPU while also reducing that noise level down, which is also really convenient. Now, if you game with headphones on, maybe that doesn't matter to you. Uh, but like I said, I like to kind of squeeze all the performance out of the CPU I bought. And if that means going with a little bit higher end aftermarket cooler, you know, no matter which ones we look over today, then I'll definitely leave links in the description uh, where you can find all these. Um, I, I definitely do prefer running those over that stock cooler. 
uh, you know, while they'll definitely work in a pinch, you know, especially if you're first setting up a build, you just got your hands on a 3600 or 5600X, uh, mainly we're talking about the AMD side here, uh, since most of their higher end ones now don't come with stock coolers, I would still recommend throwing on some kind of aftermarket cooler to reduce noise, bring thermals down a bit, and just overall increase your performance, even if you don't want to go into dialing an overclock, just having that PBO on as you saw, allowing the CPU to stay a little cooler as it tried to ramp up more, uh, will make a difference. Uh, Cause like I said, the lower you can keep that CPU temperature, the more the CPU is gonna boost on, it on, boost on its own once you have a PBO enabled. So hopefully you guys got something out of that uh, little test we did today. Uh, so it's been fun kind of trying all these different coolers out. So like I said, I've used them a good bit in the past. If you wanna see any more of these in a future build, uh, definitely let me know, comment down below if you wanna see that. Uh, but that about does it for everything today. Like I said, hopefully you guys did gain something out of uh, the ma uh, madness going on over here today. Uh, like I said, if you guys do have any suggestions for like I said, any of these coolers you want to see on the, on the next video, definitely, like I said, drop a comment down below. But uh, that about wraps it up, guys. I appreciate you guys stopping by today. Take it easy.